Hi, I'm Jeff the Thrifty Overlander. In this next project, I'm going to do a paint protection for my pickup. When I bought my truck a year ago, it was in immaculate shape for especially being as used as it was. I was, I was very happy with that. I didn't even have a door ding. And uh, from the beginning, I've been wanting to do paint protection of some sort, but I just didn't get around to it. Life got in the way and I had uh, trips to do and uh, fun to have. So uh, it did get pretty scratched up over the last year, uh, you know, what I call desert pin pinstriping. And um, I really didn't want it to get that much worse knowing that it did this much in a year. So I decided to go ahead. Uh, I had originally gotten some quotes uh, anywhere from 1000 to 2000 just to do the sides of the truck. That's all I was really looking for. I, I don't necessarily need it to be on the entire truck. Uh, and that was uh, too much for my thrifty budgeting. So I started looking around at the different um, materials. And of course, the, the one that's, that comes up the most, that's uh, the most popular, is a 3M material. Unfortunately, that also was pretty expensive. It would have been several hundred dollars for the material needed to do the two sides of the truck. So uh, I looked around and I found uh, basically, I guess it might be a Chinese uh, a manufacturer of it or some, of some sort, but I'll leave a link in the, in the description below of what I ended up purchasing. It's definitely a, a lot thriftier choice. Uh, the one I chose, uh, there's, there was two different ones. There's a, the regular one and then there was the extra thick. And I of course went with the extra thick because it's gotta be better than thin, right? So um, it also comes in bigger sheets that I was able to work with. Uh, the biggest sheet that it came with was a uh, 5 by 10 and I ordered one of those and my calculations kind of showed that that would cover one side of my truck. So really what I'm after is to cover the entire side from the headlights to the taillights and the side is what really gets the, the most pinstriping and that's where the biggest problem is. And um, it's also kind of the flattest so it's going to make the project a lot easier so that was kind of part of my theory as well. So then also I did it a really thrifty way that that five foot by 10 foot sheet, I was able to kind of cut it up and use it into different sections. So I'm doing differently than, than a lot of people would. Um, I'm kind of, I split up my doors even. For instance, the door is uh, split up into a two thirds and one third section of it. There's a natural uh, body line that I'm kind of uh, making a, um, a cut off. So that way I can do a two foot section and then so out of that five foot, I can do two foot, two foot, and still have a foot left over to do that bottom section. So in other words, I've kind of cut up things a little bit more than probably other people might want to in order to make that one five foot by 10 foot um, sheet last for an entire side of my pickup. As far as the materials concerned, I can't give you the greatest um, review on it because I don't really know. I can give you a review that I think it's plenty thick and I think that it goes on quite well and it feels like it's gonna stay well but I don't know for a fact how long it's going to last or if it's going to yellow or anything like that. It's definitely uh, much cheaper. The, the film I bought was $45 for the extra thick version of it for that 5 foot by 10 foot sheet. Whereas that amount in a, like the 3M uh, I'm sure is a lot better, but that amount would have been you know several hundred dollars. So again, I'm just doing the standard thrifty me. So this paint protection film is uh, it's wet applied. So basically um, once you've got the cutout you want, then you uh, wet the side of the truck with a solution. I would call it slip solution. It's basically a jug, or, you know, a spray jug of water with uh, like three squirts of um, baby shampoo into it. So uh, it gets a little bit of slickness from that baby shampoo. So you wet the truck and you wet the um, material as you're uh, peeling the, um, the the backing off of it. And then that just goes onto the truck. You can move it around. Um, and uh, get it into the right placement and then you start to use the little hand squeegees to get the water out from underneath it and the bubbles out as well. Pretty straightforward. Um, you just got to kind of dig in and do it. I've watched a few videos on it, not a whole lot. And what I did is what I did. I can't say that it's necessarily the best way or the most professional way, but it's what I worked out in the end uh, and that's the way I did it. So I also, some of the professionals will do it more where they wrap the uh, material around the edges of all the doors and everywhere and I basically chose to make it a little bit easier on me I should say quite a bit easier and um, and cut do a cutout uh, where it's actually like an eighth of an inch or something back from the edge uh, so that I'm, I've got just a flat surface that I'm uh, my edge is uh, based on so the project was fairly challenging uh, in my case since I did wait a year before I actually did it I wish I would have done it a year ago when the paint was a uh, pretty much immaculate I had to do an extra step and that was to, to buff out the, the desert pinstriping that I already had as best as I as I could anyway. So that added some hours to the to the project itself. Um, also the very first sheet you do or section you do it takes a little bit longer 
And once you've got that kind of figured out, then, then it goes a lot quicker. Uh, each section, like a door panel, probably took about a half an hour or so each uh, once you've got it down and, and it's, it's going pretty well. So it's, it's not like a, something you do, you know, start at noon and you're finished by supper time on the whole truck. It's definitely um, several hours worth of work. Now, uh, I'm hoping basically that this is going to really help a lot as far as uh, keeping the truck from getting a lot worse. So maybe down the road, the value of the truck will still be a little bit better because it's not going to be nearly as beat up as it would have been with us. I'm not under the impression that this is going to eliminate all scratches from now on. Uh, this clear protection, I assume, is going to get uh, scratched up as well. It's just going to basically protect my paint so that that uh, is preserved for down the road. It won't be uh, any worse than it already is. So just like my video uh, for removing desert pinstripe that I did earlier, I'm doing basically this, the same thing. I, I'm using an electric drill this time instead of my cordless drill just because i got so much to do. Uh, I don't want to run the batteries down over and over again. Uh, so I've got this old drill, just burn it up if I need to. So I'm just going to now, uh, basically I've got the, the uh, heads on the drill and I'm just going to do the polishing. I've got the scratch remover uh, and then it's basically you're just polishing with this. So. Hopefully maybe the pinstripes will show up here and I go back here and you can see they, they definitely decrease quite a bit. There's still some there, but it's not near as bad. So while this is playing, I'll explain. Uh, what we did is we cut the sheets into the squares, basically uh, just a little bit larger than what we needed, on, and basically taped it to the truck, and then uh, used uh, Sharpies to outline the edges of it so that we would have a, basically a, a form to, to follow uh, to cut it with. After we peeled the backing off, whenever we did apply it, I used that, I kept that piece of it. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, and I used that as the form for the other side since they're mirror images. So we found that um, this stuff is so heavy it doesn't cut well with a razor uh, or a, a knife type blade so we're gonna ha we had to cut it with a scissors and then um, it's so heavy uh, it'd, be, it'd be hard to cut on the truck so we put it up using a sharpie because there's the outside layer is going to be peeled off we made lines and then we're just cutting it as almost exact as we can to be uh, what goes on the truck. Okay, so I buffed out the pin striping as best I could, and then um, we're getting ready to put the actual film on, so we do go to clean it. I just used like some awesome uh, and did a, a real good cleaning with that, with a, with a rag. And then the next step really is uh, that same slip um, material. It's really just some baby soap or baby shampoo with a, a water. And then I'm spraying that on. And then I've got a synthetic um, clay bar. And so I'm just doing some clay bar work on this. Then I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do that same uh, slip material again. It's got a little bit of soap. Clean it up one more time. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I have the actual tack, which is alcohol and water. And I'll spray that and use a lint-free cloth to um, do one good... Uh, wipe down that gets rid of all the oils and um, fingerprints and stuff like that and then then it'll be ready for uh, putting the film on again this is uh, applied wet and then you uh, basically get into the exact position you want and you use these hand squeegees uh, to push out the basically the water and the air bubbles both kind of start in the middle work to the edges and uh, and just keep working it until you get rid of all the bubbles uh, I do suggest making sure everything is absolutely as clean as possible I had some problems with some dirt dripping down from the uh, the windowsill or, the, or even the doorknob so that took a little bit extra and you know, maybe gotten a, a few little specks underneath it as well that uh, I learned to make sure it was a lot cleaner the next time. So once we sprayed the truck and we sprayed the, the material it goes on it slides around you can get it where you need it to be and it's actually pretty easy that way and then as you saw it was just a matter of uh, squeegeeing that water out. The real key is is None of the edges go down very good until you heat them. I think you're basically kind of cooking the, the water off as well as heating the material and that stickiness and getting those, those edges uh, pushed down really good. So the, the heat gun, or I guess you can do it with a um, blow dryer, is very key to getting the edges uh, all, especially whenever there's, there's roundedness and all that, it really makes a difference in getting that, that uh, foot down.
So for this rounded fender, uh, fender we have a, we kept about a half an inch or so, and I just put a slice every now and then, and then uh, we can just uh, wrap this around the corner. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe. We'll see you on the trail.